Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and I am back with another video for Arteza Week. In today's video, I will be sharing how I made my first project, which was an embossed resist canvas frame. I hope you'll stick around and see how I'm going to create it. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I'm so excited to be back with my first process video for my Arteza Week series. If you're not sure what Arteza Week is here, make sure when you're done with this video, you go check out my video from yesterday where I share more about Arteza Week and let you see the goodies that I will be showcasing over the next few days. And the good news is, since that video went live yesterday, I found out that I could do a giveaway here on my channel of some Arteza goodies. Since I just hit my 13,000th subscriber, I decided that that is what I would celebrate with this giveaway. I will be back on Sunday, September 13th to tell you how you can enter. When I unboxed my goodies, I was super excited about the DIY frame watercolor pad. This is a pad of watercolor canvas sheets that come pre-scored and pre-perforated so that after you're done decorating it, you can fold it into a canvas. How cool is that? you're able to make a nice flat piece of artwork and then fold it into a canvas. I think this is gonna be great for stampers because it's kind of hard to stamp on a canvas because of the give that they have when you go to stamp. So, so this is a great way for us to get our artwork on a canvas. In today's video to decorate my canvas, I'm gonna be using an embossed resist technique. The Arteza products I'll be using are of course the DIY frame watercolor pad and I'll be using my real brush pens. I will add some other products as we go along in the process and I will be sure to let you know what those are when I introduce them. If I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. For this sentiment, I'm gonna be using the Amazing You stamp from this set. You do want a stamp that is more bold because you don't want any fine details because of the texture on the canvas. I have already put that stamp on a block and I will be stamping it with Versamark, heat embossing it with clear embossing powder, and then as always, I got out my embossing buddy to make sure that powder only sticks to where I want it. And I did go ahead and pull off the outside edges of the canvas paper. I prepped the area of the canvas where I want to stamp my sentiment and I ink this up a lot. Normally with something with this texture, I would use my Misti so I could stamp it again. But unfortunately, this is bigger than my Misti. So I really wanted that nice and juicy. And then I pressed that stamp down into there pretty hard and I let it sit for a few seconds before I pulled it away. Once that was done, I poured the embossing powder over the area where I thought the stamp was because you know, you really can't see it. And I tapped off the excess and I decided to go ahead and just put another round on there to get any missing parts of the sentiment covered with powder. Once that was there, I did let my heat tool heat up for about 30 seconds off camera before I brought it into the canvas paper. I find that this helps a little bit with warping and I will also heat from the back and the front to assist with that as well. I'll try to show you here what it looks like, but it has to catch the light just right so you can see it. I did pre-choose some real brush pens that I wanted to use. I got out A117 Arctic Blue, a118 wisteria purple a190 rouge pink and finally a111 light green i will be using the water brush pen that came with the set I am protecting my work surface with my Dollar Tree cutting mat, and I do have one of those corner scraps just to wipe off my brush later when I need something. 
I start by doing a water wash around the sentiment and I do want my color to fold around the canvas so I make sure to get water past those pre-scored lines. Once I have some water there I bring in my first color and I just kind of very loosely in angled strokes put color across the sentiment. You'll see there that where the embossing is the watercolor is not sticking to and that's why this is called a resist technique. Once I have that first layer of color down, I bring in a paper towel and gently wipe away whatever color is sitting on top of that embossing powder. During my first round of coloring, I didn't quite get my strokes long enough to go past the pre-scored line at the bottom. So I brought back in my water brush pen, added some water below those lines, and then I recolored each area. Once I had the extra color added, I came back in with my water brush pen and kind of blended the areas where those came together. Once again, I brought in my paper towel to wipe off any ink that was sitting on the embossing powder, and you'll notice that it helps the sentiment stand out a little bit more, but I decided that it still wasn't bold enough. I let that first layer of color dry completely. I bet it wasn't any more than 10 minutes before I was ready to add some more color. To do that, I used my water brush and went back over the previous colors line, and then I brought back in the marker of the same color and just went back over that area to make the color a little more bold. Now you will see that every once in a while, I have to bring my real brush pen to the scrap on the right. That's because those pens, they soak up the water and it mutes the color that comes out of it. So I wanted to make sure that my color was coming out full strength to make that a more bold color. And you'll see here that in the middle of each of my colored lines, it is darker. I brought back in that water brush though to kind of smooth that out again and make it flow into the first layer of color just a little bit better. I did another swipe with the paper towel, let it dry completely, and here is a look at the completed dried piece. Because there was a lot of white area left on the canvas, I did want to add a little bit more texture and I decided that I would add some paint splatters or some ink splatters. So I got out just a cheap old brush that I use here for usually embossing powder. And then I took each of the colors and just kind of flicked it back and forth over the top of that brush. Now between each color, I did wipe that off with a paper towel just so I didn't get other color inks on each of my markers. Once I had splattered each of those colors, I brought the paper towel back in and cleaned off my sentiment. After allowing that to dry completely, it was time to finish my canvas. I decided that I wanted to add something to the white area, so I got out my pink diamond dots along with my art glitter glue and my new jewel picker that I got in the latest Simon Says stamp kit. This is the first time that I'll be using it, so I'm super excited to try it out. Just like with my ink, I wanted to kind of splatter these pink diamond dots around the front of the canvas. I put five of them onto the canvas front and I arranged them so they were going from the top left to the bottom right. That was probably the trickiest part of it all because those things are hard to turn over. Once I had them where I wanted them, I put a very small dot of glue next to it with my art glitter glue pen and then with the jewel picker, I moved the gem over to the glue dot, I held it there for a count of five and then I kind of rolled my jewel picker off of it. I found that if I just tried to pull my jewel picker straight up, that the little diamond dot usually came with it. So just a tip if you have something like this, give that a try. Once those gems dried completely, it was time to put my canvas together. And I'm actually gonna show you this in real time so you can see how quick and easy it does go. I do pre-fold all of the pre-scored lines just to make the folding easier later. And then there are instructions on the back of the pad that tell you what order to fold everything to. 
While I finish that, I did want to tell you about some links and discount codes I have in the description box below. Arteza was kind enough to give me a 10% off code for my subscribers to use. That is in the description box, and right now it is good until September 22nd. If it does get extended, I will be sure to let you know. I do have links to each of the products that I got from Arteza in the description box below. They are affiliate links, which means I get a small commission at no extra cost to you. And I do have shopping links for the US and the EU. I hope that you'll go check out their online store because they have lots more than what I am featuring here on my channel. I already owned their alcohol markers and their colored pencils, and the reason that I bought the Arteza products was not only do I like the quality of them, but I love the price. So if you're in the market for any new art supplies, I do hope that you'll check out the links in my description box. Now, speaking of links in my description box, I have also linked up their YouTube channel. I myself have gotten lots of pointers from their videos and they make some beautiful artwork over there. So make sure you check out my description box and go visit them. Maybe let them know that I sent you. I am finishing up folding the frame together and you'll see that in the back there are some notches for those tabs to go into. Once I have those in place, I kind of point out where the nail holes are. Each side of the canvas has a little T cut into it, and that is how you can hang it up on the wall. I thought that was super handy that they thought of that as well. I absolutely love the way that I could decorate this flat and then my artwork wrapped around the edges of the canvas. Here are some close-up looks at the finished piece. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made today's projects quickly and easily using some Arteza products. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.